I grew up in Parramatta, it's kind of like my home. I spent 11 years doing musical theatre at the Parramatta Riverside Theatre. I watched my best friend kiss a girl I had a crush on on this bridge over here. And when I wasn't at school, I was wagging right here by the banks of the Parramatta River. Parramatta was essential to my foundation over 30 years ago. But what about Parramatta's foundations? Well, you're going to have to go back a lot more than that. Three hundred million years ago, Australia was still attached to Antarctica. This huge landmass called Gondwana was a lush rainforest. It was nothing but ferns and the odd four-limbed fish, and they didn't even have light rail or humans. And the next minute, we split off and we became a separate continent of our own. Then the Cumberland Basin formed. It took a while to do that, about 120 million years, but once it was flowing with fresh water, life flourished by the Parramatta River. Soon the ancestors of the marsupials we know and love appeared. Giant wombats, kangaroos and koalas and bandicoots moved in. Mammals like these furry grey-headed flying foxes started to appear about 10 million years ago. Eventually, humans turned up, the ancestors of the Baramatical people. And they liked it so much they stuck around for 60,000 years, taking care of the land as it took care of them. Their descendants are still here today. Those flying foxes, they're still here too, making their home in the trees around Parramatta. Why wouldn't you? Parramatta's got some of the best real estate in the country. So tell us, why do bats love Parramatta Park? I think the fact that there's a nice water body there, tall trees, um, makes it a perfect spot for bats. I think scientists are still trying to work out why bats tend to roost uh, where they do, but Parramatta Park is such a beautiful spot, so I think I'd like to live there too. Maybe it's because they are big fans of the Parramatta Reels? Maybe, yes, yeah. yes. When people are at Parramatta Park and the bats are gone, where have they gone? At night time they're heading off in whatever direction there is the most food, and they can travel on average 50 kilometres in an evening. So they basically fly a marathon every single night in search of blossom, and when they're busy foraging all night, and get themselves covered in pollen and pollinating our gum forest. I'll tell you what, if I got to go within 50 kilometres of Parramatta, I'd be charged $15 in tolls. I know, I know, they get, they get by toll free. <laughs> Lucky them. I know. What if you walk around Parramatta Park and you see one on the ground, should you uh, take it home? I'm glad you asked. Any wildlife, it's really important that we don't touch them. And if we come across any wildlife that we can pick up and handle, it means there's something really wrong with them, especially bats. So contact your local wildlife service. So in Sydney, that would be wires or Sydney Wildlife. Now, should people be scared of bats? Absolutely not. Could you be scared of that? No, no. I couldn't be scared of that. It's so cute. Homo sapiens are the largest mammal to inhabit the Parramatta area. They've built hives where many humans spend their days gently tapping at machines in order to impress their worker leaders. Others come here to frolic in the surrounds, participate in commerce, and many of the juveniles flock to the area to perform complex courting rituals in order to find a mate for life, or just for the night. What? Foundations are being remade once again for the future.